sing that part one more time. Because we know God's goodness. If it wasn't for Him, we, should, we wouldn't be here. I'd invite everyone to sing, sing with us. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. surrender to you and in this moment father we want to just have that heart of surrender to you as we worship you and we declare your goodness father god you have been faithful in every way possible you have been so faithful and it is that reason father god that we just surrender to you we surrender to you this morning father have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts, Father God. We just want to exalt you. We want to give our heart to you. We want to put our trust in you, Father. We just want to lay it all down. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways, Father God. We come before you, Father God, knowing, knowing that you are perfect and that we are in need of you, Father God. We are in need of you, of your goodness, of your faithfulness. We are people in need of you, Father God. Just so grateful for your presence in our lives. We're so grateful that you are not like us, Father. We are grateful that no matter the circumstance, no matter what we've done, no matter what path we are taking, Father God, you are good. You are good to us. You are faithful. No matter how many times we've strayed, no matter how many times we've fallen, no matter how many times we've we've not trusted in you, you have been faithful, you have been faithful, and the truth is that we believe it or not, you are faithful, that is a fact, you are faithful, you are good, you are love, yes you are, let's sing that one more time, you are perfect, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us one more time you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all We just want to be here right now with you. Give us the strength. Because your love endures forever. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see. Just one.
Worship Him the way you worship Him. Make it personal this morning. Lift your hands and lift your voices and worship the King of Kings. Worship the one who sacrificed everything so that you can be in the seat that you're in right now. Come on and open your mouth. Don't be silent. The Bible says that the rocks will cry out in your place. If you don't open your lips and give the God who saves a hallelujah, a praise, worship Him right now. However way you worship and praise Him. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. We just want you, Jesus. We just want you, Jesus. We don't want any gimmicks. We don't want anything, Lord, but you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. Come on. Nothing else, nothing else will do. Worship it. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else I just want you. Only you, Jesus. Nothing else. Give them a crazy praise right now. Clap your hands. A crazy, come on, a, a crazy. Come on, you used to get crazier in the club. Come on and give them a crazy praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. I, I, somebody in here got saved by the Lord, you know. Somebody in here is redeemed. I can feel the redeemed saying so right now. Come on and clap some more. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome to Breakthrough Community Church. We're so happy that you cho- chose to uh, join us here this morning to worship. We know you could have went anywhere else, but it's a setup. Somebody say it's a setup. It's a setup. God brought you here to, this morning. He has something for you. Is there any first time visitors here for the very first time? Raise your hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. For, we have a uh, Jose Calderon, Kathy, Glenn, Rhonda, another, we have two Glens in here, or is that double ups? We got two? We got two Glens up in here, and Naomi, give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We hope you are blessed uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to take, how, how long, you guys? Five. Trying to add some, Shyla. <laughs> Five minutes, you guys, five minutes. Just get up out of your seat, shake hands, hug on the brother and sister here today. Just uh, And welcome the new people. Welcome the new people, you guys. God bless you.
Amen. Praise the Lord. If you guys can make your way back to your seats this morning, we got a few, well, we got quite a few announcements. So uh, we're a busy church. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that idle time is the devil's time. So there's no excuse for you not to be busy, right? Amen. Busy for the Lord, at least. Uh, if you, at this time, if you have your phones, go ahead and uh, take them out and just check into the Breakthrough uh, Community Facebook page and just let everybody know where you're at this morning. Uh, for all the ladies, they will be having uh, the first uh, women's conference. Uh, amen. An intimate with God. Save the date, Saturday, uh, 9, uh, September 23rd, uh, 2022. Tickets are $25.00. This includes lunch, dinner, and one free coffee from Jehovah Java. Amen. Can't go wrong with free, right? Amen. And people probably only come for the free stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so there's a special speaker, including worship, classes, and workshop throughout the day. If you are interested or uh, in volunteering uh, or have any questions, please go to the women's ministry sign-up table at the back of the church. On this side over here, and uh, somebody will be there to meet with you. And uh, start talking about it. Start getting excited and inviting your friends. Amen. Um, covenant study announcement. Don't forget Wednesday night service at 7 p.m. They are starting a new study uh, for August called Covenant. So it will be for the whole week of August. So uh, come and be a part of that. That's uh, ev uh, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at the church. The evangelism ministry, um, they are providing hygiene bags, and, and, and they're uh, donating to the homeless uh, this Friday, August 5th. For those of you who are not able to join, you can still uh, be a blessing um, in that if you want. Um, for more information, you can see uh, Andrew and Jesus. So, we have an evangelism team that's been going out every other Friday. And, um, you know, it's just time to start reaching out. You know, if, if, if you haven't seen, there's a great need uh, around the world, for that matter, but even in your own town. You know, I, I don't know how many young homeless people that I see on the streets every day. Young. It's not, and, and they don't look like they've been out there that long. But there's a great need. So if you have any questions, see Brother Jesus or Andrew um, on that. And on Saturday, August 13th, there will be having a free car wash to serve the community here at the church. Uh, come be a blessing. It will give us an opportunity to share the gospel, invite them to church. There will be a sign-up sheet at the welcome booth if you are interested in volunteering. And um, you can see Jesus uh, for that as well. At this time, if you can focus your attention to the screens, they got a short video they want to play. That's because every shepherd was created to reach the other side of the board successfully and to be crowned as a king. But many checkers don't make it to the other side because they've gotten junk in the process. Every man has been created by God to become a kingdom man. But there's an enemy afoot to knock you off the board through sin, through rebellion, through failure, through things that are designed to distract and destroy you. My name is Dr. Tony Evans, and I want to invite you on a journey. On a journey to find out how you can still get your crown. In the midst of family disintegration, in the midst of social decline, God is calling men. He's calling you and me to man up, stand up, and rise up as his kingdom. Amen. That's the new study that the men will be doing. Um, if you have any information with that, you can see Brother Johnny. So it's Saturday, August 7th at 6 p.m. But if you have any more questions concerning that, see Brother Johnny. Don't forget to stop by the welcome booth for an updated bulletin. Uh, see what's going on here at church. Like I said, we have a lot of things going on. 
and you can get all that information as well from our bulletins, and they are updated uh, continually, so just stop by the welcome booth on your way out. If you need a tithing envelope or a prayer card, just raise your hand, and our ushers will be happy to get you either one of them. Just let them know what you need, and if you're filling out the prayer cards, um, if you can just kind of fill those out and even put your name on them, uh, we want to go before the Lord with those needs as well. Amen. How many is excited to give this morning? <laughs> Amen. It's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to give to the Lord. Amen. It's, it's another part of worship and um, God honors it. So if we can go before the Lord this morning, if our ushers will go ahead and make their way forward, we're going to pray for some, um, this morning's tithing offering. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord God, first of all, Lord God, that you've allowed us, Lord God, to be in your presence. Father, that you allowed us to uh, open up our eyes this morning for a new day, God. Father, we're grateful this morning, Father. And Lord God, we just want to be a blessing to you, God. We want to be able to bless you, Lord, just with a portion of what you've given to us, God. Father, we ask, Lord God, this morning that you would bless the tithe and offering, Father. Let it be multiplied, Father, to meet the needs of this house, Lord God. And to be able, Lord God, to do uh, what you've called us to do is to go out and reach, Father. And Father, we know it takes finances and it takes a willing vessel, God. So, pro Father, I pray this morning that we would be willing to do what you've called us to do. Bless this tithe and offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you can praise him with me. It's okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Well, I just want to uh, give you greetings from our pastor. He is taking some uh, well-deserved time off. Actually, he should be on his way back by now, but he, he went off fishing. Amen. So that's good. <laughs> I'm going to bring us back. Last time we went fishing, he cooked that fish and it came out real good praise God but uh he'll be back let's pray for his uh, safe return amen amen ah, praise the Lord praise the Lord so today we're going to be reading out of the gospel of John chapter 5 but before we get started let's let's pray amen father God we just come before you this morning and we know, just like the song says, we just want you. We just want to hear from you, Father God. Not from me or any clever things I might have to say. But just you, Father. So I pray that you would put me aside. That your Holy Spirit would take full and total control of today's message, Father. And of every heart, Father, that you would captivate each heart, Father, preparing the soil of their hearts, that the seed of your word, Lord, which is planted this morning, would take root and bear good fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the title of my message is going to, and I came up with it. I didn't have one until this morning. <laughs> I had everything, but just not the title. I just, the Lord. And the title is, What Will This Place Be Known For? What will this place be known for? Amen. We're going to read out of uh, chapter 5 in the Gospel of John, starting with the first verse. It's chapter 5. Make sure I'm in the right spot on my notes, too. Yes. Let me know when you're there. Say, I'm there. I'm there. Amen. We know... We know Rich is there. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 1. Reads like this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, all waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time uh, into the pool and stirred up the water. Somebody say, stir it up. <laughs> so he stirred up the water, and then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity, 38 years. It's a long time. Verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been uh, in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in to the pool. Somebody say, no man. He said, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Verse 9, and immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. <laughs> it's just funny to me. <laughs> uh, 11. He answered them. He who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> it's still funny. It's still funny. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn and a multitude being in that place. Wow. I'm going to read that verse one more time. It's verse 13. It says, but the one who was healed did not know who it was. He didn't know who Jesus was. Okay, we'll go forward. For Jesus had withdrawn a multitude uh, uh, withdrawn and a multitude being in that place. And after Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Praise God. So the Hebrew word Bethesda means house of mercy or house of grace. House of mercy or house of grace. And in Hebrew, and it's in Hebrew and Aramaic, and it it also could it could also mean shame or disgrace. It's funny how a word that uh, or a name that that uh, has to do with such a place can have two different meanings. Same place, but it could have two different two different names that it's known for. Can you believe that? Everything that was happening there, right? So it's interesting that the pool is named a house or a place of mercy and grace, yet 
this invalid, this invalid man, this paralyzed man, this sick man, had been coming here along with many others that were there, because the Bible says there's a multitudes that gathered there, and he was this way for 38 years. 38 years in this house of mercy, in this house of grace. Hmm? And in all that time, mercy and grace was never truly shown to him. Hmm? However, it does seem that the other possible name or meaning of the word shame and disgrace might be better befitting what was taking place in this man's life. Right? Because to be an invalid, even, of, even though many, it wasn't their fault. Some were born this way. Actually, I would guess to say the majority <laughs> wasn't their fault. They were born this way or they became this way. Uh, it still led to shame because they weren't able to. How many have ever been in a place where you weren't able to do the things you wanted to do? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you weren't able to be the man or the woman that you wanted to be because of something that happened in your life or something that is even happening in your life today. And, and you're just waiting for something to break. You're just waiting for something to happen, to change your circumstance, to change your situation. And you're just in this place of hopelessness, this place of shame, this place uh, 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 of uh, disgrace, because in your eyes, you aren't the man, the woman that you were meant to be. And so this man in this place known to be a place of grace and mercy lived a life of shame and disgrace 38 years. 38 years. Nevertheless, the pool was uh, well known for its miraculous healing properties, right? And it had gained a reputation among the people in the surrounding area to be a place where people who at one time lived in shame and disgrace, that they could, uh, because of, uh, of their infirmity, could be made well. And so they crowded th the pool. This pool was crowded with people who were in a place of limited resource, who were in a place where they felt that same shame, that same disgrace. And so the alternate name, the alternative name, this alternative meaning of Bethesda became more real to them. Shame and disgrace. So verse 3 says that there lay a multitude of sick, blind, lame, paralyzed, uh, uh, waiting Amen. Their eyes fixed on the water, waiting for it to be moved. Uh, uh, other, another uh, interpretation or version of, uh, 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 of this says they called him. Uh, uh, here it says he's a man, a sick man of infirmity. Another place called, called him uh, uh, an invalid man. And I, and I kind of looked at that. And when I seen invalid, I, I didn't see invalid the way we truly pronounce it. I seen invalid. Invalid. In other words, he had become a man without validation, a man only known for what he was not rather than what he could be in such a place, a place of hope, a place of mercy, a place of grace. He still was not known for who he could be, for the potential that could take place. And so he was invalid. To man. They were there for one reason now. And this particular portion of scripture focuses on the one man. But common sense would say that he was not the only one that, wa that uh, went home at the end of the day without a miracle. Right? Prior to this time when he met Jesus. And how many had continued another day in their shame and grace, just like he did. 
year after year, day after day, moment after moment, day in and day out, they would make their way to the pool with the hopes that maybe today would be the day that this would no longer be a place where they where their shame and disgrace remained unchanged, but that they would not continue to go unnoticed, to be invalid, but that finally this place would live up to its name, what it was known for, that this would be a place, a house of mercy, a place of grace. This place had the potential for both names, for both titles. It had the potential to be a place that changed everything, that that a life of that had been living day in and day out for years and years and years, a multitude of people. This, had, this place had the potential of being a place that would change their whole world. And in changing one man, that he could change another because he would not go unsilent for the miracle that he had experienced in this place, that he would not go unnoticed any longer. Amen. Like so many uh, 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 invalid people, so many people that were, were stuck in their place of, of, of paralyzed uh, living their their place where they could not uh, uh, remove themselves, amen, from shame, remove themselves from mercy, stuck, that in this moment they would see this man changed by the power, the miraculous power of God, standing upright with dignity and purpose and a place to go and the legs and the feet to take them there. They had hoped, they had prayed, that it would live up to its name, this place, this title. And I would also venture to say that although the majority of those that were there were there to be healed and there was more than likely those also that were there just to see what was going on, to be a little bit nosy, How many mentiches do we have in this place that want to know what's going on, want to get into the salsa, want to dip into the Kool-Aid, and you don't even know the flavor? Huh? They're like, man, something's going on. I was hearing, I bet you, you know what I'm saying? So they want to check it out. They wanted to witness the miracles they had heard so much about. They were probably also those who had returned back to the place that they had previously received a miracle from. They had already been to the pool once before. They had already experienced the miraculous power of God in their lives, and they wanted to come and see who else was going to get what they came for. And so they came, and they were there, and they also, like everyone else, were watching what was taking place, right? Nevertheless, many people from different circumstances and different stories had gathered there for their own specific reasons. And now most preachers, a lot of preachers I'll say, will focus on the one man being this way for 38 years. And they might say something like, he was not truly willing to do whatever it took to receive his miracle, right? They might question his resolve. Or the sincerity of his heart for change. And to receive his healing. How could he stay there for 38 years and not figure out some way. Somehow. To get himself into the water. And even if he had to drag himself in there. Right. To receive his healing. This is a, it's a legitimate interpretation I would say. You could say that, right? They might point out Jesus' question when he came to him. Do you want to be made well? And they'll say it like this. Do you even want to be made well? Have you heard somebody preach it like that before? This is not an uncommon passage of scripture, right? They might say something like that. Or even that the sick man's response was not an immediate yes, a man, not befitting of a man that had been sick for 38 years, why didn't he say, yeah, of course I want to be, what do you think I'm here for, right? They might point that out. 
But he offered, or, or they might even say that he offered an excuse, right? An excuse instead of, uh, uh, instead of, uh, you know, saying, yes, I, I do want to be made well. He said, well, but nobody will help me in. And he, they might point that out and revolve their message around it. And say, you lazy man, how could you not want to be made? Well, why don't you say something? They might point that out, right? And that also could be, it could be a legitimate observation, right? I mean, maybe after 38 years, he just was used to going there, but he had lost hope or or even an inkling of, of a thought that maybe this might be the day. Maybe he just got stuck in a routine of coming there. How many have ever prayed a prayer? I mean, I'll admit it. You pray a prayer, an impossible prayer, a, a, a crazy prayer that, that, that requires true faith, but never truly believe that it would ever happen to you. I would venture to say that there's more than one person in here that's prayed that type of prayer before. It, or, or maybe you might have started praying for it, believing with faith, full of faith, in the name of Jesus, and just praying for your loved one, praying for your sons and your daughters and for your mothers and fathers, your wives and your husbands, just believing. And, 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 and a year went by, and two years went by, and ten years went by, and there's still no change. There's still nothing happening. Lord, I've been faithful. I've been praying. What's happening? happening i don't know i don't think he'll ever change i don't think she'll ever get right i don't think we'll ever have what i prayed for but you still keep coming but in your heart you don't no longer believe and so you go through the motions but your faith is paralyzed just as much as your body can you all resonate with that but today, I would like to offer you another view. Although those views are very true and very real and can happen, I'd like to offer you another view, which I believe is equally legitimate and what I also believe is God's message to us in this present season. Ask yourselves this question. Why in all the 38 years of this man's infirmity, as he continued to come to that pool each day, why had no one offered to help him into the pool? I could probably see why the others who were in the same condition like him would mostly be focused on getting their own miracle, right? That they were probably barely able to get themselves in, much less help an invalid man into the pool. But what about after they received their miracle? What about after God changed their lives? What about after they gave their hearts to the Lord and been redeemed from drug addiction and alcoholism and, 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 and pornography and, and, and depression and, and suicidal thoughts? What about after they received that blessing of, of redemption in their family and a restored marriage? Why? Would they come to this place, this place of hope, this place of grace, this place... And continue to see people come in and out day by day by day. Hoping for a miracle just as they have received. Yet not help them to receive it. And you might, they might have came in and sat and said, dang, they've been coming here for a while and they're still the same. But maybe they were like this man that had been that way so long that they, they hoped for it, but they had stopped believing that it could happen. And maybe they just needed someone that was the same way, that had been the same uh, situation, that had, had, had felt the same hopelessness to, 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 to reach down and to grab their hand and to say, it's okay, I know what it feels like because I've been there, but you can do it. I'll help you. Let me lift you up. Let me hold your side. Let me pull you forward. We're going to get into that pool. You're going to receive your miracle. Woo! Mercy. 
mercy. How many have witnessed this happening? I was that man. I was that man. I can't dare. I can't dare pass the soul up and not try to get them there. I can't do it, you guys. I can't do it. He's brought me too far. He's he's changed everything for me. If, if, If you only knew, if you only seen me, how messed up, how paralyzed, how lost. If you could only see my marriage, how broken, how destroyed, how hopeless. If you could only see my children. But the power of God is still present to do a miracle. The water has not ceased to stir. As a matter of fact, that water in this moment and in this place is being stirred up right now. Because it exists within each and every soul that is represented this morning in this place. He's stirring it up. He's getting the pool ready. The temperature is right. You know, when it's not too cold, it's not too hot. It's ready with them little massaging bubbles so you can get up in there, dip it in, and receive your miracle. I'm just saying. I think I would have been, I think I would have been so excited I would have wanted someone else to experience the same miraculous power that I felt. I I couldn't be, I couldn't be, you already see me. I'm one of the loud ones in here beside my sister Shyla. You know what I'm saying? You all all see me over here. I can't keep myself, I can't keep myself contained. It's too much. It's too much. (laughs) Oh, man, God is so good. I, I would have wanted someone else to to experience that power. Or was it that they were so caught up and and finally receiving what they what they wanted that they simply didn't notice the need laying right next to them? It says there was a multitude gathered at the pool every day. Multitude, you guys. You know what a multitude looks like? That's a lot of sick people, you guys. That's a lot of hurting people. There's some people probably in this sanctuary right now that are hurting, and they don't look like they're hurting, but they're hurting. They need someone to grab a hold of them and pull them along. Connect them with the women's pieces of choice or the conference that's taking place. To connect them with the Tuesday night men's Bible study or the discipleships we do once a month. To make a phone call with them and pray with them and to encourage them because they don't know what it looks like. Not just to receive a miracle, but to walk in it. It's one thing to receive a miracle, but what do you do once you get it? We need you. It's called discipleship, brothers and sisters. It's called discipleship. I would think that they they might have even had conversations in the times past while eagerly hoping and waiting for their own healing so that they might have knew they might have knew of his dis- despair and his hopelessness yet did nothing about it once they received what they needed. Probably sitting, I mean, 38 years, that's a lot of time. You're not just going to sit there and not talk to nobody, right? How many? How long have you been sitting in the chair next to you and haven't had a conversation with somebody about where they've been or what they've done or what they need or what miracle they're hoping for? He's probably, he's probably sitting next to the guy laying next to him, Ryan, and saying, dang, bro, how long have you been here? Wow, you've been here a minute, huh? Yeah, man, I was born like this. I don't even know what it feels like to have toes, let alone wiggle them. You know what I mean? And 
The other guy's over here, you know what? I, I'm blind. I was born blind. I don't even know what toes look like. You know what I'm saying? And they have these conversations of their hopes and their dreams. And Have you guys had those conversations with each other? Have you ever asked? A brother or a sister, what's going on in their lives, what they need, what's the miracle that they're praying for? Have you prayed with them for it? You ain't going to find out. Some of us are waiting for them. They're waiting for, for, you're waiting for them to come to you as if you're the Dalai Lama or Saint whatever. You're waiting, well, if they don't come to me, then, you know, that they must not really want it, so I'm not going to reach out to them. Sad, huh? Some might just have been focused on the water and the miracles, the miraculous spectacle that was taking place, because that's all it was to them is a spectacle, right, an event. As the next invalid received their miracle, they're just watching, and even some might have been there not for a miracle not to witness the water being stirred up, but merely to scoff and point their fingers and turn up their noses to the shameful display, disgrace, sick, and invalid, indescribable people that were gathered there in despair. Sitting, pointing, criticizing. Yes, it's in the church. Yes, in the church. Let's read verse 6. What does verse 6 say? It says, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, say, Jesus knew. He knew. He had already been that way a long time. And he said to him, do you want to be made well? So Jesus, he saw with all the people that walked by and disregarded and didn't pay attention, Jesus came and he saw, Jesus asked, and Jesus acted. Huh? Jesus acted. Have you ever had somebody say, uh, uh, How, what's going on in your life, brother? What's going on in your life, sister? And they spill up their guts, man, this is happening, that's happening. And they say, uh, well, I'll pray for you and shake the next brother or sister's hand. And they, only to forget to pray for them. Or not even really truly hearing what or seeing what they were going through. But Jesus, he saw, he truly saw the issue that was taking place in this man's life. He, he knew he understood what was taking place in this man's life. And he asked, are you ready? Are you ready to be healed? And then he acted. He said, pick up your mat and walk. Huh? He acted. Verse 14 says, Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst, a worse thing uh, come upon you. So not only did Jesus act in that situation, in that circumstance, uh, uh, to, to, to receive that immediate healing, but he continued to act. It wasn't over at the altar. It wasn't done at the first prayer. It wasn't done just because you decided one day and you seen and you said, you can do it, brother. You can do it, sister. You know what? I went through that before and look at me. So you can do it. You can do it. That's great. That's good. But guess what? It can't stop right there. It cannot stop at these altars because once they receive their healing, once they receive their breakthrough, there is an enemy. There is a devil and he's waiting right there, crouched at the door to rob, to steal, to kill, to destroy the blessing, the miracle that just took place in these altars. So you can't just act once. You can't just act twice. You have to continue. Continue day in, 
in and day out as just like they came to that pool day in and day out encouraging, teaching, preaching, lifting up, correcting, directing your brother and your sister so that they can become the men, the women of God that they were called to be. You got to keep acting. You got to keep, it doesn't stop right here on Sunday. Christianity is not lived out on just Sunday and Wednesday. Discipleship doesn't just take place from this pulpit. It takes place in bedrooms and living rooms and jail cells. It takes place on the streets. It takes place in in personal situations at workplaces. Discipleship takes place in the ins and the outs of day-to-day life as they continue to fight. That you stand beside them and you fight with them. That's discipleship, brothers and sisters. Many of us here today gather here at the pool. Every Sunday we gather at the pool. Some of us are still waiting for our miracle. Some of us just want to see what else happens. What's going on. Some are just waiting to see if today is the day. Some have received their miracle. You've received your miracle and you got what you came for. But you're struggling with doing what's next. Some of you see the need. You know. You ask. And you act. They're here today too. But how many know there's not enough that are here today? They need more. This wall is coming down, brothers and sisters. That wall right there, it's coming down. Amen. Praise God. It's coming down. On the other side of that wall, there's been uh, Brother Noel, Brother Gabriel, Brother Patrick. There's brothers that have been working, you know, uh, 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 devoting their time on on another stage and another sanctuary. Amen. It's coming down. And we're going to end the Lord. I'm not saying we are. The Lord added to their number daily. He will add. But we need men and women of God that are ready to act. Then there's, then there are uh, those who are. Let's read uh, verse 10 and 12, 10 through 12. The Jews therefore said to him. Who was cured? It is the Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry your mat, your bed. And he answered them. He who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. (laughs) It's not lawful. (laughs) Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your mat and your bed? One who was healed, he, he did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn the, mul- the uh, multitude being in that place. There's those of there's those people who are so wrapped up in tradition and legalism, they fail to see the miracle that's taking place. They're so wrapped up on what day it is. All they see is this man walking with his bed on the Sabbath. It's not lawful. What you talking about is not lawful. I shouldn't even be walking. It's not lawful. I've been on my back for 38 years. It's not lawful. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? There was a woman that came to Jesus, delivered from some foul stuff, 
She was so grateful that she kneeled at his feet and she began to, to, to tear, drop tears, tears of thankfulness, tears of gratefulness on his dirty feet and began to uh, 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 wipe his feet with her hair and, 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 and clean and kiss his feet. And, 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 and begin to just offer this worship, this gratefulness to him. And it wasn't traditional. It wasn't what they were used to. And they're like, if they only knew who was uh, uh, sitting at his feet, how foul she is, how filthy she is. And what is she doing? She, she didn't, you know what, that, that perfume, it, it could have been used uh, uh, to feed the homeless. And they're just thinking and criticizing their form of worship, not realizing, not even, not even thinking about the miracle that this woman received, that she was not outside on the street selling her body, that she was not stuck, you know what, in, 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 in a, a place of a promiscuity and lust and, and bound to her previous sin. All they could see is that uh, 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 her filth and, and the manner in which she was worshiping, and they did not witness the miracle. Legalism. It's not lawful, they said. <laughs> They've been practicing their traditions for so long. Far beyond the 38 years that this man was sick, right? That they missed the hurting, hopeless, paralyzed, in need of a miracle right in front of them. They're every, they were there every day, hoping and waiting. You might have even held a conversation with them, but, but missed it. Well, I'm not perfect, you guys. I might be behind here, but I'm here by grace. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am, and I do what I do only by the grace of God. I shouldn't be here. So I ain't pointing a finger at you. I had to receive this word just as, just as well as you did. Amen? So you might have even had that conversation and missed it. So caught up on what day it was. Some, it's not, it's not their intention to hurt anyone. They actually believe that they are in the service of God's will. They're not trying to hurt anybody. They're trying to be pleasing to the Lord and, and follow him according to what they know. Right? Not unlike Saul, who became Paul. He thought he was right when he was grabbing these Christians. How dare you? You blaspheme and worship this man Jesus, and 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 and, and uh, you blaspheme my God. He that's what he thought was right. In doing so, the Apostle Paul did it. He eventually, uh, he evidently persecuted the Son of God inadvertently. Until Christ revealed to him just how blind he was. And opened his eyes. He didn't even realize that he was paralyzed. And he was an invalid. And he was stuck. Amen. In shame and disgrace. Until the Lord revealed to him. Just how blind he was. To the truth. He revealed to him the truth of the gospel of grace. And then by that same grace brought the gospel to a people he would have never received or had anything to do with. The Gentiles, a people who were not a people, but because of this became the people of God. And as he was an elite Jew and a follower of the law, that he was and he he never saw them. He never saw them. He never saw them. Not the way they needed to be seen. And he was devoted. Amen. 
he was devoted to meeting in the synagogue. He went to the pool regularly. Never seen it. Never seen it. So the Lord opened his, his eyes. So the last portion of scripture is going to be in the book of Mark chapter 2. And I'm going to start closing it out. I want to give you a little picture, a short picture of the way we should be. Amen. An example of the heart we should have. Chapter 2, are you there? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It says, and again he entered Capernaum as some, uh, as some day, after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house, and immediately <laughs> Jesus was in the house. <laughs> Somebody say Jesus is in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. Verse 2, immediately many gathered together so that they were no longer, there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. It was packed. It was packed. We're getting pretty packed in here. And he preached the word to them. And then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. <laughs> he was carried, brothers, sisters. He was carried. I'll say it again if you didn't hear me. I said he was carried by four men. Say like, I didn't say carried. I said he was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him, meaning Jesus, because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof. They blew the roof off that place. Huh? They came through, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, hey, let's say that again right there. They, he, he broke through. Somebody say breakthrough. Oh, that name sounds familiar, breakthrough. Oh, we might have a church named that. They broke through. And they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, say their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Amen. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. There they are again, pointing and poking. <laughs> you know what? This is what it is right here. They didn't wait for him to come to them. They didn't even wait for him to be sitting at the side of the, the house. They carried him there. I said, they carried him there. And when their situation was dire and there was crowds and they couldn't get through and it was so hard, to get to the miracle. They didn't say, man, there's too many people. There's no way this can happen. Hey, you've been sick for so long. Another day ain't going to hurt for you to wait. They didn't even wait for him to do something. But they made a way. They climbed up with him on the roof. They, they did what was impossible. They did whatever it took. They carried him there. And because of their faith, it didn't even say that the paralytic man believed. It said that because of their faith, they led that man, they carried that man to his miracle. If you could please stand. Come on and stand with me. Some of you here this morning or any one of these different scenarios that I talked about, some of you are here and you're waiting for your miracle. Some of you are feeling just as hopeless as the paralytic man that was laying by the pool and you 
you want to believe, but part of you doesn't even think you'll ever get what you need. Some of you are the men that and women that walked by and never noticed the need and did anything about it. But there's every scenario, I believe, in this house this morning. And God didn't bring this reason just so Brother Johnny could get excited and jump around on the stage. This message is for us, brothers and sisters, to take our place, to have the heart, to do whatever it takes. Whether, whether we need to be carried to the pool or we need to do the carrying. These altars are open, whatever that is. Whatever your need is, if you need a miracle or you just are, you're ready to be the ones carrying, you're ready to do your part, amen? Whatever your situation, it doesn't matter. There was all kinds of situations at that pool that day. But the fact remains that the power of God was present to do a miracle. And today, it is present here your miracle. Come on up, brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. If the Lord is putting in your heart to grab somebody and bring them up, then you be obedient. You help them. You grab them. You pull them up. Bring them up. Do what God called you to do. Be who God called you to be. Carry your brother and sister to this altar for prayer. Maybe they don't have the, 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 the courage, but they just need somebody to, to encourage them and push them to come up and receive that prayer. You be that person that encourages them. Grab somebody, man of God, woman of God. Hallelujah. For those of you who are watching online, I believe and I know that God has a miracle for you and distance has no bearing on that. I'm going to pray a prayer for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that your miraculous hand will meet my brothers and sisters that are watching online in their living rooms, in their bedrooms, wherever they're at. And whatever their situation may be, Father, I pray, Father, for their miracle to take place right now in the name of Jesus. Father, bless them and fulfill your will in their lives, Lord. Strengthen them that they can walk, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Tune, tune in with us.